welcome to DC today. Uh, I am with you, Brian Seitel. It's uh, uh, November the 9th, and um, uh, good to be with you here on DC today. We actually had a little bit of a, of a market sell off. The market opened up. I actually thought I was going to write something like Groundhog Day. It seemed very similar to yesterday. It was just sort of benign, low volatility. Um, and uh, then we, at around one o'clock or so, we had a treasury auction on 30s. It was $24 billion go out, at, um, and it was just sort of a dismal or abysmal, really, um, auction result. The bid to cover ratio was in the low twos, um, meaning two to one. It was something like two and a quarter, I believe. We, we've been in this sort of the two and a half range for a long time, including the past couple months. It just means the amount of bidders that are coming in versus the amount that's being auctioned. And so it was a lower amount there. And then so the rates have to close higher in order to get the deal done. So rates kind of went up on the day around one o'clock. Um, initially, 30s were up 20 basis points. They came down. From there, they ended up up maybe 12 basis points on the day, but twos went over 5%, tens were up 11 basis points. And so bad treasury auction, um, uh, clearing price was higher than expected, sorry, lower than expected on the price, higher than expected on the yield to get it done. And that sent markets lower. And then you also had comments from, from Jer Jerome Powell today from the IMF. There was a panel that he spoke on today that was deemed more hawkish. He basically said he wasn't confident. This was sort of during a... Um, uh, back and forth, but he said he wasn't, the Fed officials weren't necessarily confident that they had done what they need to as far as restrictive policy to get the Fed, to get inflation back to 2%, um, which is a, which is a hawkish tone. You know, it alludes to maybe having to raise more if they're not confident about it. But I don't know if that was the best choice of words as far as the word confidence goes, because um, I think they would prefer to exude confidence at, at most times. But nonetheless, it's, um, you know, yesterday we got what was perceived to be dovish. Today we get what was perceived to be hawkish. I don't know that there's a perfect way to say anything these days. I, I just think from an investment standpoint, you know, long-term investors, I mean, it really doesn't matter day-to-day -day stuff. Look, inflation is coming down. Um, energy inside of inflation that we were worried about with things like Ukraine, with things like, you know, things like Iran and Israel and these sort of wars that could cause energy spikes has come now down. The energy, oil is back to where we were pre that, you know, we're in the high seventies now or mid seventies, actually. It's in the range of where we've been the last couple of years. It's just back to that range. And we were above it because of this geopolitical risk out there. So we were worried about that causing inflation to be more sticky and that has now come off. Um, uh, and so with, with that, with employment starting to cool and with what they have said and telegraphed and with what Fed futures are pricing in, which is a 90% chance that they're done, I just think we can go on and um, and just say that they're they're likely done at this point and just sort of move on. And, and it really should always come back to fundamentals anyway. So there shouldn't be around what one person says about something that is, frankly, completely unknowable. Um, so fundamentals in, in markets are are OK. Um, and that's what we'll take, especially with what we're doing at Bonson Group. So, um, you know, the, the part of the uh, auction uh, closing it kind of worst pricing on the day, you know, it does have to do with, um, you know, a $2 trillion deficit that we're dealing with in this country. And we're dealing um, with the reality of a decreased amount of huge buyers of our treasuries out there. The Federal Reserve in this country isn't there to buy as they're letting their balance sheet roll off. And governments such as China and other big sovereign governments are technically buying less, part because of fundamentals, their economies are a little slow. And so they have less money to invest. Uh, and then part because of uh, sort of a decoupling of, 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 uh, of policies and things. Um, there was um, a jobless claim number today at uh, 217,000. We were expecting 218. It's basically in line there. But last month was revised up and continuing claims were a little higher. So while we still have unemployment that has, again, gone up from three and a half to three nine, it's still very low. Um, in historical terms, we are seeing some cooling in, in the labor market, which I guess is good and bad. I mean, it's what the Fed was hoping for so that they can claim victory on inflation uh, it, it, you know, as, as going by the Phillips curve, but it's, it's not necessarily good with less people working in this country. Um, you know, I, I have some sort of evergreen comments in the Ask Brian section, and um, you know, it's a real life thing. People ask about what we do, why we do it, how we do it. Um, there is some secret sauce that's hard for me to just lay out in an email or something to it all, but 
I, I, at the end of the day, I mean, we're, we're screening things on a quantitative basis because you sort of have to start there. You have to go through hundreds and hundreds of names. And the only way to, to start that process is with quantitative metrics, starting out with an above average yield compared to the market average, um, higher percentage of free cash flow coming through those businesses and just more durable business models as we kind of look through those companies. But from there, it's a very active approach. It's very much a human element that is going through. And we're looking at fundamentals of each business. We're looking at the financials. We're listening to earnings calls. We're understanding management's direction and history and tenure of dividend growth. Um, what kind of commitment? It is a part of company ethos. Um, is there a long track record of it? Those types of things. And yeah, we're looking for value. We're, you know, we're looking for companies that we feel are undervalued based on those fundamental you know, qualitative metrics that we've we've examined where some of parts is equal to more than what the current trading price is. And, and those are all very much human decisions within the investment committee of TPG that, that really can't be replicated just by definition, you know, because we're people and, and there's only one of us <laughs> that we're going through and doing it. So it is a unique strategy as compared to other strategies that trade out on the market. Um, there's plenty of of dividend growth strategies out there, but most of them are quantitative only. And um, and we add something a little different than that. But at the end of it all, you know, getting to a point of having consistently rising income every single quarter for clients that either gets reinvested um, and compounds even faster or provides lifestyle protection um, and inflation protection uh, to expenditure, meaning that because your income is growing every single three months, uh, the rise in inflation affects you less. You know, your purchasing power is protected. Those sort of evergreen things are just core to what we do. They're fundamental. And um, and I enjoy answering questions about them. And if you have other questions, I encourage you to reach out and, and ask us. We're here for that. But with that, um, you know, down day, first down day in the month of November, it's going to happen. Not to worry. Um, we'll be back with you soon. I'll be in New York next week working and doing meetings and some TV things. And um, I will be back with you on DC today on Wednesday and hope to hear from you before that. So with that, I'll send you a good night. Bye-bye.